remember when the pandemic started and we weren't allowed to sit on park benches. And I'm like, listen, I don't mind putting my civil liberties and my freedoms on hold to figure out what this is all about, but it's a slippery slope. This is the Virtual Happy Hour Experience with the Drunken Grape. I am your show host, Rob. If you are tuning in, make sure to smash the like, share this channel, subscribe. It always is tricky business. I was talking with my guest that's coming up in the green room about this to gain subscribers. So subscribe, hit the notification bell to all when you do so you do not miss any content. And today we are talking about freedom. This is a hot topic. This is a topic that's come under fire. You know, people have been accused of wearing tinfoil hats. Um, people have been accused of being extremists. Often they're moderates. They're only concerned about their own civil liberties. In fact, people like Russell Brand, Joe Rogan are not extreme at all, have stood up against uh, what is happening and talking about personal freedom. I have a huge personal freedom advocate on this show. He is a great guy. I've been a guest on his podcast before. He has the Launchpad podcast. I believe he's under J-Man is alive. Jay Petrunik, how the hell are you, brother? I'm doing well, man. Thank you very much for the intro and love being on your show. I catch it often. And like you said, mash that subscribe button. It really helps. Yeah, I mean, you know, you've been growing a pretty successful channel. It's not easy. And on that note, it's a happy, happy hour. I am going to crack Cronenberg Blanc Free Rouge. This is a fantastic beer. Comes from Cronenberg around Strasbourg, 1664, the Holy Roman Empire, when that part of France was Germanic. And uh, it's in the style of a wheat beer. And with this, of course, you get notes of coriander, citrus peel. They infuse concentrated raspberry and elderberry juice into this. So it's very sharp. It's got a bit of sweetness, balanced with bitterness, beautiful balance in this. Jay, I love this with hot and honey chicken wings. This pairing with this oh. beer is fantastic. What do you have there, my friend? Cheers to you. I know you have a drink in hand. Cheers to you. I have a green screened gin and tonic. I like my Bombay. I love I've Bombay. I've been with Bombay for quite some time, and I like Bombay with everything. <laughs> <laughs> I love gin. Yeah, gin and cigars actually are some of my favorite. I am a big that, cigar smoker. I, yeah. I love cigars. Um, I just had dental implant surgery, so I have to avoid any kind of thing like that. Um, you know, I'm not a smoker. The odd occasional cigar is fantastic. Um, but again, with dental surgery, um, you have to watch pockets and dry pockets, all sorts of stuff. I have titanium bolts in my mouth, so oh, well, you that's go. got to <laughs> heal into the jawbone. But it's gone well. Obviously, I'm here hosting a podcast five to six days after the fact. So anyway, Jay, you do some great things. I know you were a radio and TV host. Um, you've got a plethora of media experience. It just shows by the way you speak and your presentations. Um, during the pandemic... A lot of your businesses were adversely affected, and you also became concerned about the attack on our liberties during this time. Talk to us a bit about that, yeah. how you launched your podcast, because you are actually a fascinating soul. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. And um, I don't know why it hit me so heavy, because I would never consider myself to be someone that really considered my freedoms to be all that important um, in regards to just actually focusing and knowing them. It was just something that I took for granted like so many other people. And I remember when the pandemic started and we weren't allowed to sit on park benches. I don't know if people remember that. Uh, like your park bench, my park bench, park I do benches remember that, that our taxes pay for. Yeah, right? you can even um, sit in a park. Right. And kids and Adults were being fined for being in parks and open spaces. And I'm like, listen, I don't mind putting my civil liberties and my freedoms on hold to figure out what this is all about. But it's a slippery slope because you say, oh, it's just a bench. OK, and then it's, oh, it's just the play structure. Then it's, oh, it's just the entire park. Then it was, oh, our businesses can't open. Um, and so I didn't want to 
you know, wave my finger around and say like, oh, I told you so. Uh, but that slippery slope of what we thought could potentially happen did. When you say the word lockdown, that's not even like, well, what do you mean a lockdown? Like we've been through a whole bunch of lockdowns. That's a normal thing now. It's amazing how these things become normalized in such a short period of time. Yeah. Uh, and I think we're at the point right now to where I would hope people would not stand for another no- lockdown uh, and, and not to be just because you want to you want to create havoc, but because at one point you have to say stop or it never does. I agree. Um, you know, I was a proponent of the vaccine. I'm like you at this stage. You know, you can't curse people because they didn't take it. I have friends who refused to take it. It didn't stop me from being their friend. I was concerned at the time, but then I woke up and realized this isn't even really a vaccine. It's more of a booster. You know, it's uh, Mm. definitely helps. But at the same time, it's the scale and the way they went about it that did you really need to restrict people like you did? And Mm. the mental health impact on this was colossal. I mean, people lost a fortune. I have friends who lost you know, in the neighborhood of two, three, four hundred thousand U.S. dollars during this time period. They got mm-hmm. wiped out. Can you imagine mm-hmm. half your, basically your life's efforts, middle class, erased? And you got to start over right. at 51, 52, 53 years of age. It's insane. Right. And, and you know what? I'll go ahead. Sorry is. about that. No, no, go ahead, brother. I mean, what's yeah, your thoughts like, on all that? Uh, I never claim to be the person that has the answers. Uh, but I do have conversations with people. And I think if anything, if I'm more of an advocate for anything else, it would be for conversation, for constructive conversation, uh, for listening, empathy, which is so huge. Uh, Because, Rob, I remember, I think you and I are are a perfect example, and I won't go so deeply into it, but we had uh, much different views, let's say, a year and a half ago than we do today. And, you know, there were some things that that you said that, I mean, obviously it's hard not sure. to take things personally when things are so <laughs> polarized uh, right. in that nature. Um, but we always kept it civil. Uh, there was never any name calling going back and forth. There was no unfriending. That's a huge thing right now with social media. Just I like know. And ghosting it's just so people juvenile. or unfriending them. Juvenile. Right. And now, and here we are through two people that, I mean, I, you know, I always stayed open. You always stayed open as well. And you were open to interpretation, open to potentially learning more to where now here we are on the flip side. And I'm sure there's uh, a number of things that we could disagree on, but look how much common ground that we have now. And it was all because we gave one another the space to have that open dialogue. Yeah. And we also question the powers that be. There is definitely a very severe um, level of manipulation at a high level going on. I mean, the powers that be, whether it's political, corporate media, I mean, even elements of social media, um, they try to constrain what you can and cannot say. And this is a blatant attack on civil liberties. I mean, slander is one thing, right? To really run Mm -hmm. someone down, attack them, like you were saying. I mean, some of the stuff that went on against opposing views was absolutely slanderous. Yet it was okay if you attacked one narrative. And that's not okay. That's actually, I agree with you. That is not okay. That is not a civil discourse. Whether you disagree with what somebody does or not is part of the reason why we have you know, in the Charter of Rights, freedom of expression. In the states, they have freedom of speech. Uh, throughout mm-hmm. much of the Commonwealth in the Western world, these laws are all quite similar in their scope and range. And it's the ability to express within a legal framework of not assaulting or harming other people, um, mm-hmm. yourself, your opinions, and your views. And, right. you know, without a doubt, there was a colossal assault on this. And yes, at first I was like, all right, you know, get the vaccine. Let's just close this. Let's just close this book. That was my thinking. Others are like, well, screw that. Vaccine is questionable. And it is because it takes usually 10 years to cultivate these things before they even really emerge as a true vaccine. Um, But in that time, you had to wonder why it took riots and upheavals after we had hit a threshold. Remember when they said... You know, talk about herd immunity once you had 75% or more of the population inoculated. Mm -hmm. Why did it take a trucker revolt to change things in Canada? We were at 92%. The government still wasn't listening at all levels. Yeah. I, you know what? I, 
I have no idea. Uh, but I do know in regards to freedom of speech and freedom of expression is that all thoughts are valid and you may not agree with them and some might be flagrant and some might be hurtful, etc. But freedom of speech and expression is hurtful. It means sometimes seeing things that you don't like and having to turn the other way because you want that same group of people to be able to also react in the same way when you want to express yourself uh, for whatever cause or um, special interest you might be into. And yeah. in regards to like where we're seeing things go with the language, uh, Joe Rogan said this uh, quite eloquently. Uh, and a lot of people are talking about, you know, Justin Trudeau and being a dictator and Castro and all that kind of stuff. And listen, we are we are far from a dictatorship Yes. At this point. But we are being dictated to we're being told what to do without the freedom of choice otherwise. Right. Yeah, and then yes. what what he said was, listen, um, I don't believe that we're in a dictatorship. I don't think that we're going to go to a dictatorship because that's extreme. But if you were to, we have taken all the baby steps necessary to get there. And that's what's scary. That's a paraphrase, by the way. Sorry, Joe. Well, you're right. And it's also the boiling frog, boiling frog theory, right? You, If you right. take a frog and you fire it into a boiling pot right away, what's it going to do? Hey, it's going to jump the fuck out of there. It's going to go, woohoo, I'm out. It's boiling. Screw this. I'm scalded now. I've got third degree burns. I'm out. But if you put a frog in water that's lukewarm, you turn the element on to a very low heat setting. And you, I'm sure you've heard this theory before, and it's fact. You can boil that frog alive just by gradually turning up the temperature and picking at it very slowly over mm -hmm. time. Well, we're and conditioned. These I politicians mean, play this game. Mm -hmm. They all have throughout history. And mm -hmm. it's just great to see people are finally awakening more and more to the scams and scandals of the elite on the rest of us. It's like one giant Ponzi scheme. And you're right to just dictate to and poke at. I mean, listen. Did I agree with the truckers occupying Ottawa? No. Did I agree with their right to protest? Absolutely. Did I agree with Trudeau coming out and pontificating and insulting them all as an address instead of talking as a civil prime minister, as a proper leader? Absolutely not, especially miles away from the cottage, uh, you know. And this is mm -hmm. things that got him the nickname, the coward at the cottage and everything else, diver deservedly so. I mean, you can't assault and attack a group of people that are your citizens, some of which probably voted for you, and right. then demonize one part of the population against each other and then claim that you support unity. And all this stuff has really come to life with mm -hmm. this pandemic. That's just my and observation. I find, I find it trickles from the top down to leadership, whether you voted for Trudeau or, or you didn't. It really does set the standard. And I got a really great example of this over the weekend. Uh, and someone, for whatever reason, mentioned, you know, the trucker convoy. There was nothing going on in regards to that type of dialogue. And then, boom, that happened. And I generally like to engage on that because I do my best to lead by example. And I will let that other person share whatever dialogue that they have to in whatever manner that they want to. And I usually just keep my calm and I try and ask good questions. And what she was saying is that she didn't like the F Trudeau flags. Okay, granted. I mean, it's aggressive, but I mean, it's also symptomatic of a greater problem. Like we don't usually have this type of thing in Canada. So why, why are we not exploring why we have those flags to start with? Yeah. Uh, and then secondly, um, she was saying that she really kind of saw it as name calling. And then I had mentioned, well, what did you think about Trudeau in regards to calling some of his Canadians, uh, his fellow Canadians that, like you said, may have voted for him, racist and misogynists. And they went, oh, well, you know, he was just doing that, you know, to get people vaccinated. See, And there's that double standard. Right. And that's what is so dangerous about a leader behaving in that fashion is that it excuses other people in regards to doing the same and mimicking monkey see monkey do. And I actually blame Trudeau for a lot of everything uh, of what is happening right now. And like, I'll, I'll put my I hand agree. up and say his, his first term, I put him in there. 
So yeah. maybe, maybe that's what helps in regards to me trying to find this balance and really communicating with people because we all play a role. Uh, yeah, and my I voted role for him is too that, on the first. You know, right. I voted for him. I gave I, him a, a shot in 2015. Did. But right. that was it. After I saw about a year and a half in where this one was headed, and I'm like, he's got to go. And then, of course, the rest of the opposition parties have been a shambles. So that did not help yeah. the situation either. But you are right. And, I mean, it's there's a symptomatic reason why F. Trudeau was flying everywhere. Have you ever seen that with any other prime minister? I mean, Harper was divisive. Did you even see that ever? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, not on mass. No. We've never seen a revolt of that caliber before in our lifetimes. Right. And part of the problem, Rob, is that everything's become politicized. You should be able to talk about the convoy and not have it place you on the left or the right. Right. Uh, but like it does. I consider myself in the middle. You're right. And I went up. Mm -hmm. I live in I live in Centertown. So I walked up to the convoy about six, seven times. I saw the rave, the bouncy castle, the DJ, the food booth. You know, I actually also saw them shoveling sidewalks better than the city of Ottawa and salting the roads, the irony of it all. all right. But <laughs> yeah. I found 85% of them to be peaceful and pleasant. There was an element that, you know, was a problem, but that's indicative of any, or that's just part of any protest. You're going to have that. I mean, when you have the left coming out, there's an element that thinks it's okay to smash statues and burn churches. Mm -hmm. Yet it's mm -hmm. not okay, right? I mean, right. it's just, but I would say 85% of them are probably pretty peaceful too. You know, Black right. Lives now, Matter, they had the protest here, that I, was pretty peaceful. Right. I went there five times, I think. Um, and some of the guests on my show spoke there. All nonviolent. And I would say my experience is I saw I saw one one thing that made me go, ooh, like I didn't like that uh, out of the five times that I went. So we all have different experiences. The one thing that I, I would give you kudos on is the fact that you know you turned off the TV and I you decided there. to go investigate something on your own. And if if one thing really disappoints me more than anything else but but i do understand like I, I understand where people are coming from and their different views is that there were so many people that had one of the largest scale like world events uh, at the time during the pandemic right here on their front doorstep and to criticize it and to let the media dictate uh the events that were happening when they could have just simply gone down to see it for themselves knowing that it's so polarized they have their friends that seem like you know their their bananas are batshit crazy because they keep on saying like the news is lying to you i'll say like listen i don't know if the news is lying or not they're definitely omitting truth uh and it was very easy yes. to see that that was the fact if you just would have gone down there and checked it out for yourself so that was a little disappointing for me i was yeah, hoping I mean, people this, would be a little bit more adventurous yeah and you know what the irony of guys holding swastika flags and Confederate flags, yet they're wearing masks in the convoy. I mean, I, right. you know, it's like that could have easily been staged, planted. The media decided to turn on that. If it wasn't staged, those people are assholes. But you know what? The bottom line, that was a fraction of a percent of that group. Um, right. oh, and oh, what sorry, I discovered Rob, sorry is to interject. Sorry, Be because you just, you'd mentioned the, the Confederate flag. <laughs> is that I, I the same weekend the next door neighbor to where I was in the backyard had uh like Aryan flags and Ooh. I decide not to give those flags any power and he yep. has the freedom to fly them you yep. know in his in his yep. backyard if he chooses yeah so yep. I just want to say that out, just yeah. in contrast right. to show how open you know no you're right. right and you could have spent 20 hours bitching on social media afterwards what's that going to do for you right and what did that do for them and enabled them? And that's the problem. And I'm glad you brought that up because that's an excellent point. You know, if you're watching this, ladies and gentlemen, this is a pretty serious topic today in the happy hour, but it's a must topic to have. People wake up and embrace your civil liberties on whatever side of the fence you belong on. Engage in discourse. Listen, common and peaceful society comes from elements of the left and right agreeing on things. This is how society thrives. But to sit back and pontificate and curse somebody only creates division. It only creates hate. And we're only going to have more strife and more violence. And it's everything completely unnecessary. And one thing I will say is the media outright lied about the present, about how most of what was going on in that protest. I know I walked through it. And I love people trying to pontificate about how evil it is. 
what a sham. They should just be plowed out of the streets by the military. And I'm going, well, you could be right on your point of view, but did you even once walk out? No. Oh, that's right. You didn't. So, I mean, how do you have a leg to stand on? It's like me trying to talk about Star Trek, yet never watching the series Star Trek with you. Right. The unfortunate you know, like, part is that, that we, are, we are misinformed. But yeah, uh, like, I understand the person that watches the news and thinks that the news is Bible. Because that's what it should be. I should be able to get informed by the newspaper. I should be able to get informed by, you know, the 6 o'clock news. And as far as that's concerned, like, I don't know. I, 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 Oh, there you go. Am I? Did I get bumped? It just no, no. I was oh, just okay because I went to a sharing. bigger screen on the left there. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, I'm you're bringing up sharing my... it. Yeah. Whoa! Look at you. Yeah. <laughs> cool things that. you can do on Riverside. Wow. Yes, it it's better than my podcast. I know I'm drinking uh, a Cronenberg out of a Belgian moon glass, but this right. is a wit beer or wheat beer style glass. Glassware. We'll get into that topic another time, Jay. But glassware is critical. Uh, with any type of drink, there's uh, specific styles of wine glasses for each style of wine that goes for the world of beer, too. And it has a lot to do with bringing up the flavor notes. You know, the esters. Oh, really? Uh, eh? It comes from the yeasts, um, hops, the malts, and the carbonation of it lifts it out as well. And, I mean, it tends to roll the flavor up the sides of the glass. And certain glassware has been proven to capture certain aromatics better on certain styles of beer. Mm. Interesting stuff, eh? That so here we I, are. I, I, I never knew. Yeah. It's like gin is basically, um, it's a neutral spirit. It's effectively vodka redistilled with at least juniper berry in it as a botanical, whether that's, uh, you know, that's infused or it's added later. A lot of interesting things going on. I know Bombay, for instance, has what, like 10 or 12 different bot botanicals in it. Citrus peel, right. angelica root, or oro, or whatever. Or I'm trying to remember the name of that herb, but a bunch of things in it. Well, that's why you're highly sought beverage. after. That's yes. why everyone wants Rob there doing At the virtual the party. party. Yeah, that's right. No doubt. So here's the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I highly recommend you go and subscribe to it. It's under Jason's name, Jason Petrunik. Um, you can find it. It's the Launchpad Podcast, Championing Freedom of Speech. Now, I don't want you to think right away that this is some right-wing nonsense. It's not <laughs> because you. he talks about a range of topics. He goes on both sides of the political spectrum. He carves right up the middle, does an excellent job. It's championing what the cornerstone of democracy is. And more and more people need to embrace this. I love how Russell Brand, uh, for instance, Jay, uh, mm -hmm. jumps right into the foray. And you know, he is certainly not right wing. Joe Rogan is certainly not right wing when they preach having public health care and dental and affordable education, proper drinking water and food around the planet, and uh, having a more balanced distribution of wealth. These are not right wing conversations at all. But they do turn around on the other side and say, what about my civil liberties and freedoms? Mm -hmm. Right. And I, for that, um I love them. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that, Rob. I really do. Uh, like, I'll, I'll speak out on this. I, I am definitely opposed to mandates. I am not a fan of mandates and how uh, they have affected people's lives that I know, like you said, Rob, and it doesn't come down to uh, like someone's vaccinated or someone is vaccinated. It, it, it's just mandates in, in general uh, that have taken prominent people and, and put them on the bottom. Uh, you know, some conversations that I have, I'm looking at right now, the Arrive Cant is my friend, uh, Greg Hill. He's a pilot. <laughs> Horrible app. It's terrible. You know, and, and he has um, three tours in Afghanistan. He's a veteran, uh, was a commercial airline pilot, didn't want to get poked, lost his job. Maybe you agree with that. Maybe you don't. But that's his story. And that's all we do is talk about his story. James Top, another veteran, just finished walking all the way from B.C. to uh, to the nation's capital uh, to have a conversation. He ended up sitting down with 16 MPs. And what a lot of people don't know is James Top was able to achieve what the truckers convoy was here to do, which was simply to share medical information in regards to the findings of the doctors that they have on their end, opposed to the doctors that they had on the government end. Uh, and Convoy for Freedom is a, a gentleman that owns a restaurant, the Whistle Stop Cafe uh, out in Coots, Al Alberta. And he drove all the way up in a rig to sit there for uh, about two weeks uh, because, you know, he was just, 
he was a regular dude that really didn't have, you know, his feet in the water about this thing. But he he's like, I play by the rules and, and you still screw me. Kind of like Jordan Peterson. He's like, listen, I got my two vaccinations. Will you leave me alone? So well, I'm there um, now. I agree. I agree. I've got uh, three. Thank you. Where are we at now? You know? Where are we at? And then there's a, a whole bunch of other things. Dr. Julie Panessi is in there. She was fired. Uh, she was an, an ethics teacher at uh, Western University. And the last conversation, I think, which would supply, surprise a lot of people, like uh, anyone that especially would want to place me in right wing would be a, a, a female friend this of one, mine. This one a right A transgender here, female. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it, it, that one is... You won't believe that chat. It's actually, I'm, I'm really happy about that talk. And, and a lot of people that listen to it, uh, like, found it to be very informational. Like, they learn something opposed to getting angry about it. <laughs> well, and I love that because this right here shows all kinds of balance. I mean, I know who Stuntman Stu is. Stuntman Stu is quite a moderate individual in the media world. If I were to talk about somebody who's probably right smack in the middle, it'd be Stuntman Sue. You know, yeah. you uh, look at these people that some people could say, sure, they might be a little bit on the right. But this topic is certainly not a right wing conversation. And, you know, for the viewers out there, this is a balanced platform. This is what it's about. And listen, I agree with you. Who cares about what people's sexuality or racial background or cultural or religious backgrounds are? We're mixed. You look more than I do. But if I remember, mm -hmm. you're half St. Lucian. I'm half Guyanese. I've got the uh, look at this. I've got the. Um, form of entry right here for basically my registration into the country itself. I mean, it's oh, nice. a long form format. It's crazy. But um, yeah, I mean, really, I love this because what you've really done is it's like my show. I bridge conversations of commonality. We are all one on this planet. It's time mm. that we started acting it. That's how yeah. I think. Yeah, it's absolutely. time to unify against the powers that have been trying to make a mess of all of us. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you and know, I, I agree wholeheartedly. Issue. Yeah, we just need to spend more time. Like, number one, identify people you can have these conversations with. Uh, and if you can't, don't. And just be friends and not talk about politics like we shouldn't be talking about politics anyways. Uh, and yeah. then for the people that you can have the conversation with, I mean, ask good questions. Be genuinely curious about what the other person is thinking uh, and, and do your best to walk away with one little nugget, something that maybe you don't necessarily agree with, but you can kind of understand and empathize with and just slowly, you know, chip away at it that way. Because Lord knows there's going to be so many things that happen you know, in the near future, in the distant future. And if communication breaks down, we're really left with nothing. And on that note, be the change you want to be and embrace the differences and the diversity of those around you. You know what? You've been a tremendous guest. I can't believe Cheers. we've been on almost half an hour getting close to it. Cheers oh, wow. to you, brother. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, whatever you decide to do, have a terrific day. This is Jay Petrunik from the Launchpad Podcast. Check out his show under his name, Jason Petrunik. I will have that in the show notes or the description under the captions of this show. And of course, make sure to subscribe to the, the, the Drunk and Great YouTube channel. Plug into the virtual happy hour experience playlist. You're going to see exciting conversations and a very diverse range of conversations like this one. I mean, we've talked in the past about uh, overcoming adversity, uh, cryptocurrencies, what it takes to become a successful entrepreneur, real estate, now freedom and liberties. There are a range of things here. Well, again, whatever you decide to do, have a terrific day. This is Rob and Jay from The Drunken Great.